I'm Cookie Miller, and this is Worth the Wait. Join me every week as I explore profound weight loss solutions beyond just diet and exercise, because a lifestyle change starts with changing your mind. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Worth the Wait. I am your host, Cookie Miller, and today we are talking about online training versus training in person. So I did a live on IG where I discussed this topic, and I really got great feedback, and there were so many more questions that people had about online training versus in-person training. So I figured I would bring this to the podcast and break it down a little bit further. I like to think that I have kind of a unique perspective on this because I've really been in like every role that there is in both spaces. So at the beginning of my weight loss journey, I had an in-person trainer for a while. I was an in-person trainer myself for about five years. And then I've run this online coaching business for the past six years. And I have an online coach of my own. So as you can see, I've got quite the perspective here. So as usual with these podcasts, I'm going to break this into a few parts. One is going to be breaking down both sides. Um, Two is going to be types of people who would benefit from each type of training. And then three is going to be what to do before choosing a program or a coach. So let's start by talking about the basics of each type of training. Now, I want to preface this by saying that each coach or trainer is going to be different and each program is going to be different. So this may not be exact for every single program or coach or trainer that is out there, but this is just to give you a general idea. So what are the basics of in-person training? In in in-person training, you're going to meet with your trainer one to three times a week for anywhere between 30 to 60 minutes to complete a scheduled workout. During that time, the trainer is going to correct you on form and technique. They're going to motivate you throughout the workout, and they're going to give you accountability with somewhere to be at a specific day and time every single week. Again, each program is different. So I have to say this before I tell you about online training, because this will be more specific to like my coaching program and programs of coaches that I've worked with. So I don't want y'all fighting with other online trainers if this is something that they don't offer. There are some online trainers who literally operate the same exact way as in-person trainers, where they essentially follow that same format of meeting one to three times per week for 30 to 60 minutes. I even did this when I first started training online. So this means that you would still meet with your trainer a few times per week and complete your workout. It would just be done virtually. So that is not the type of online training that I'm referring to when I get to this list of the basics. So the basics of online training are personalized video-led workouts for you to do on your own time, video-based feedback on technique and form that you can reference as needed, nutrition support and education to teach you how to eat for your goals, access to a functional registered dietitian to review any lab work for possible hormonal issues, access to your coach 24-7 through messaging, ability to schedule one-on-one calls throughout the week, and then access to educational content surrounding topics that directly impact you and your goals. So now that you have an idea of the differences in the basics of each type of training program, let's talk about who would benefit from training in each type of program. So let's start with in-person training. I found that those who see the most success with training in person are intermediate to advanced level athletes or people who just have a history of working out. This can be trainers themselves or people who played a sport or are currently playing a competitive sport. I find that these types of people do well with in-person coaches because that is like the only missing piece for them. They already have the mindset tools. They already have learned to set boundaries and develop discipline in their personal lives. So these are usually folks who have developed a good relationship with food and are already educated on what they should eat and meeting a trainer for a couple of hours per week is all they really need to stay on top of things. 
Now, who would benefit from training online? So online training programs are great for very busy people. Workouts are done on your own time and can vary throughout the week. So there's no set appointment. There's a ton of flexibility that works with real life. I also find that online training is great for type A personalities, people who like structure and keep checklists and do great or or tend to do great in an online coaching setting because they can follow their digital calendar, they can set habits, routines, etc. Online coaching is also fantastic for beginners or those who have yo-yo dieted heavily in the past. So since many online training programs include some sort of mindset work, there's an opportunity to learn the tools that you need to get your mind right for this lifestyle change. Now, the last thing that I will say about benefits or who would benefit from online training is that those who are in need of education, the ones who Google everything and have all these, you know, all of this information, they're like in analysis paralysis. So an online training program, or at least a good one, is going to have an educational component. Again, with in-person training, those more advanced clients may not need to be educated on meal timing or macronutrients, micronutrients. They may not need to have in-depth form reviews and things like that. But for a beginner, knowing these things are key to long-term results. So an in-person trainer would just tend to be running around too much from location to location or training multiple clients back to back, and they simply do not have the time to educate the client. So no matter if you feel like you're leaning more towards online training or in-person training, there are some things that you need to do before choosing a coach or a program. Again, I have been in the position of being trained in person, being trained online, and also being the trainer in person and the trainer online. And these are just things that I find that are going to be beneficial not only to the coach, but of course, to the client and to the results of the client. So first First thing you want to do is research the coach or trainer you're considering hiring. Do they have testimonials? Look for those testimonials. See if any of the client stories resonate you. Try to see if they have clients that remind you of you that have that are dealing with some of the same issues that you are dealing with. Um, Secondly, you need to consider does this coach or trainer have a consultation process? If you can just go in and log on and buy the training program without the coach ever talking to you, that might be a red flag. (laughs) That might be a red flag. So if they do not have this, I would recommend that you don't hire them. A good coach or trainer will never just blindly work with a client without figuring out what their issues are, what their mindset barriers are, what um, what types of physical ailments they may have. How can you program a workout for someone if you don't know that they have a bad knee, for example? So please make sure you're dealing with someone who has a consultation process. This does not stand for like those kind of standalone programs that you can just buy. But I'm talking about if you're trying to hire a coach to actually work with, they should be getting on a consultation with you, whether that's in person or online, period. Next thing is the consultation is also an opportunity to get to know each other. Every coach is not for everybody, and sometimes personalities just don't mesh well. So it's important that you have a good rapport with your coach because this is a vulnerable process. If it's not, if you don't feel comfortable to talk with and confide in your coach, then that may not be the best working relationship. So again, the point of the consultation is really two part. That's why with me, if you've ever gotten on a consultation with me, I like to meet you, talk to you, get to know you. Because as a coach, I may have to tell you some hard things sometimes. And if we're already not vibing, then it may not be the best working relationship for us. So we talked about what online coaching is, what in-person coaching is, the benefits of both, and who each type of coaching is for. And lastly, we touched on what you should do before choosing a coach or a program. Now, if you are interested in working with me one-on-one in my online coaching program, 
please fill out an application at cookiemiller.com and we will add you to the wait list. Those who are on the wait list will be notified by email or by text once spots become available. So be sure to list Worth the Wait podcast as your reference so that I know that you are a listener. So that's all I got for you guys. Thank you so much for listening to Worth the Wait. If this episode or any of our episodes have helped you, please consider leaving us a five-star review. You can also take a screenshot and tag us on IG at Worth the Wait Podcast, and we will definitely repost. So I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.